So you think you've eaten too many mince pies and you've put on a bit of extra weight and maybe your suspension just needs looking at in the new year. Either that or you were lucky enough to have Mr. Father Christmas himself buy you a brand new bike and you just want to put some baseline settings in, ready for you to go off and ride and then make your adjustments from there. However, in this video, we're going to be looking at your preload, compression, and your rebound settings. To complete the first step, which is your compression settings, aka setting your sag, you are going to need a shock pump. An ordinary bicycle pump, or track pump will not work in this situation. Preload adjustment is achieved by either increasing or decreasing the air volume in the air spring, which is normally found on the non-drive side of the bike, right on top of the fork stanchion where the crown is. Now if we look up here on top of the forks on the non-drive side, there's a little cap that will unscrew. Once you take the cap off, it will reveal a valve, which is where your shock pump will connect to. Down here, we've got a little rubber O-ring, and this is how we're actually going to be measuring the sag here today. Um, before we start actually measuring the sag to see what we've got um, on the bike at the moment, um, if you've been out riding, make sure you've wiped down your stanchions because you don't want to be pushing loads of dirt down towards um, this part here because you don't want any dirt getting in underneath that seal. So I'm just going to push it all the way down, like so. And now I can sit on the bike and see where the sag is set at the moment. So get on the bike at this stage. Um, you don't want to be bouncing up and down on those forks at the front. If you have got a fence or something nearby that can support you for basically staying on the bike and not toppling over because obviously you're not moving along. Um, what you want to do is lean up against the fence like so. Now I'm keeping all my weight at the moment over the back of the bike. At this point I'm going to now put my feet on the pedals. I am not going to pull the front brake, okay? but I will keep the back brake on slightly for now. now I'm just going to come up, stand with my weight over the bars, take now my weight off the off my finger off the brake. Now that should tell me what the sag is going to be. Now let's just get off and have a look, see what the reading is. Okay, so on these forks, I have actually got um, some measurements on the on the stanchions. These are RockShox Yari. Um, you can see there it's got measurements for 180 and 170 mm travel. Now these forks are actually the 170 forks, so this line down here is the one that we're looking at. So the 25% mark is just below where my thumb is, which is above this red O-ring. Below the O-ring is 20, above is uh, 25%. So I'm looking at 22.5%, I reckon. Um, I'm just gonna redo that measurement, but I'm just gonna bounce the fork up and down first and then retake it just to see if that is correct. Okay, so let's just get back on that bike. We'll just cycle that fork for its travel a little bit and then retake the measurement. Okay, slide that O-ring down again. Remounts, same way as I did before. Weight over the front. Okay, sit down without bouncing the fork around and then have another look. Well, if you have a look at that, that is running just under that 25% mark. Now, what I'm going to do is probably take out a little bit of air just to get that onto the 25, just for the purpose of the video. Okay, so when you're taking air out either your fork or your shock, you don't just want to press the pin in the middle like you could do with a tire. That is just going to let out so much air um, in such a short amount of time, you will not have zero control over that. So this is where you want to actually connect your shock pump. Once the shock pump's connected, there's a little valve here which you can press just to take a little bit of air out. 
So if I just connect that on now, just screws on top of that valve, you'll hear it go and you'll see the dial move as well. Some pumps, there we go, that's moved up. Some pumps will have a um, digital readout. But this one here is a dial. So at the moment I have got 120 PSI in my fork to give me just, un just under the 25%. So I'm just gonna pop out um, 10 PSI just by using this button, just being careful on here as to what we're doing. Right, that is now on 110 PSI. Just gonna remove this quick, just to then recheck that sag setting for the fork. So there we go, slide that O-ring down. On the back, up against the fence. Let's just move over a little bit. There we go, without compressing the fork. Get into the attack position. Go. That has compressed a little bit off the back. It's compressed under my weight. And we shall have another look. There we go, right. So here we have got, it's really close now to that 25% sag. I will probably go no i'm gonna call that it that's as good enough for me as, as i want it to be i think now onto the rear shock again it's got a, a red rubber o-ring on it just gonna slide that up to the top before i sit on the bike now i'm not gonna cycle the shock on this one because i have already done that when i was hopping about on the bike a little bit to get the front one cycled before checking so that's into position it's now time for me to get into position and we'll see what the rear shock is set at Right, with this one, you don't want to sit down just yet. Make sure you're, you're, you're comfortable. Feet can touch the floor. Get on that rear seat now, no brakes. Put your body weight on it until your feet just kind of hover above the floor. And at that point, you want to then get off slowly, making sure you're not going to push down the bike any further when you get off. Now looking at this one, I would say that I'm over my 30% sag, which is what it was sat at before Christmas. So that tells me I have eaten too many mince pies. So in order to put some air into this one, locate the cap, mine is just here. I'm just gonna undo that. And again, underneath you will find a Schrader valve to which you can connect your shock pump. Okay, so I'm just gonna screw my shock pump into that valve. Like so. So in the rear shock, at the moment, I have got 180 PSI. I'm gonna take that up to 190, and then we can remeasure to see what the sag is sitting at. There we go, that's at 190. Let's take that off. Always take off your shock pump when you're checking um, because this tube here will have a small amount of flex in it and if you're sitting up and down on your bike, if this starts moving, you're gonna get an incorrect reading. Here we go, we are still sitting just below that 30% sag mark. I'm not sure if that's actually moved or not. Ok, 
Okay, so that's now up to 200 PSI. that is sitting now actually just below that 30% sag so I'm gonna take out I'm gonna take out some air well this side is right on it no that will probably do I think that's gonna do me but if you wanted to be more fussy uh, removing the air will be using the valve on the shock pump um, and that would hopefully just drop that bang on to that 30 but I'm not too fussed Moving on to the compression setting, the dial can be found on the opposite side, on the top of the fork to where we just topped up the air, or took out air from. Um, the compression will change the speed at which the fork can compress through its available travel. So if you have a high compression setting, this will make the fork compress slowly through its travel. You can increase your compression setting if you're suffering from pedal bomb, like on climbs for example but the higher you go with this the less compliant or comfortable the fork will be when you hit a bump so this is something that you will have to experiment with if you have a low compression setting the fork will then compress quickly through its travel to give you a more plush ride if you have a suspension lockout on your forks this will not actually lock out your forks completely but it will put the compression at its highest possible setting um, which is a great and convenient way to prepare for that steamy climb. The forks that I have here actually have the RockShox charger damper um, and you can click your rebound settings in here. So, I mean, as you can see on the dial, we've got plus that way, so that will increase your compression. The other way, obviously, is going to decrease your compression. The shock, on the other hand, on my bike doesn't actually have any compression settings. Now finally we move on to the rebound, which is what returns the fork or the shock to its extended, uncompressed position. To adjust the rebound, you will need to locate the rebound adjustment knob, which on the fork is found at the bottom of the lower fork leg. These are normally found on the drive side of the fork. So you can see this one just here. Yours may be red. It may be a completely different color altogether, but this will adjust your rebound. The more rebound that you have set, the slower the fork will return to its ex extended, uncompressed state. Not great if you're speeding through bumpy terrain, as it will not be able to recover between compressions. If you have a lower setting dialed in, you will find that the fork will return much more quickly, which is good for more challenging terrain, as it means that after hitting a bump, it will be back up and ready more quickly for the next one. Now for the shock, the rebound adjuster is found on the top on my one. It might be somewhere different on yours. Get it somewhere, go out for a ride, and then that's when you're gonna probably have a bit of a play with it and try and get it most suited to yours type of riding. So now you've got your sag set, your compression set, your rebound set. It's time to head out onto the trails and see how it performs. It might be worth taking your shock pump with you in case you did want to make any adjustments when you're out and about. When you've made your adjustments and you know where you are, try and make a note of your settings. So you want to make a note of the pressure that you've got in your fork and your shock, the clicks of rebound that you have, and also the compression setting clicks. Make a note of that. If you've ever got to take any air out of the chambers for the service, you know exactly what you've got to put back in to hopefully get you up and running again. Now for the eagle-eyed of you out there, you may have noticed that I've done this without any camelback or water or anything on the bike. If you really wanted to, you could load your camelback up, put all of your riding gear on and do that. I've just got normal clothes on. Our weight fluctuates from day to day anyway, so I'm not too sure myself exactly how much of a difference that would make. Obviously, let me know in the comments down below if you think it's gonna make a difference. So, 
If this video has been helpful for you, give us a thumbs up, like, definitely subscribe if you want to possibly receive another video in the future that is going to be of help to you. Until then, see you next time. Bye bye. So if we look right here on the non-drive side of the fork, you'll have a little cap which should unscrew. But my fingers are really cold today. I can't get in there. I can't do it. <laughs>